night has fallen when fear is calling still you're calling me when faith is lost and my hope exhausted you will be my strength when the mind when my mind says i'm not good enough god you're enough for me i've decided i'm not giving up because you won't give up on me you won't give up on me
and our adoration to you. Amen. Amen. Great. You may take your seats. Thank you. Year seven and eight, this is also your cue. You can go out and join the rest of your program. If I can just ask, while you are taking your seats, if there's spaces in the middle of the rows, if you could, wouldn't mind shuffling down so we've got gaps at the end of the rows, that would be fantastic. Thank you. My name is Tamsin and uh, I'm part of the team here at Heart Church and I want to welcome you this morning but I, I want to give an extra special welcome. If you're here for part of our child and baby blessing then I want to give you an extra special welcome this morning and we're going to go straight into that part of our service and why we do child and baby blessings here at Heart Church is they're really important to us. They're a, an opportunity for us to celebrate with some of our precious families and our little ones. And it's really important to us here at Heart Church. We take our example from Jesus, who in the Gospels of Matthew and the Gospels of Mark, where little children went to approach Jesus. And uh, people thought they were being helpful and were like, oh, no, 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 you, you're, you're too little. You can't bother Jesus. But Jesus actually got cross with those adults. And Jesus went, no, 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 no. Let the little children come to me. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus welcomed little children. And we, don't we, Heart Church family, we want to be a place where children know they are welcomed. Where we believe, don't we, where children can come and know that they have a heavenly father that knows them, that loves them. And from a very young age, we believe that children can have real relationships with God. I remember being really excited when I think my son was three years old, sat in our old building, and he said that he wanted Jesus to come and live in his heart. And brilliantly you know he's, he's obviously got great parents I mean that's that helps but also knowing to be part of a great church knowing that he was going to be surrounded by people that were encouraging him and my daughter in their walk with God even from a young age so Jesus placed his hands on the children and blessed them and we're going to take that opportunity in a moment this morning 
And I think, don't we, as those of us who are parents in the room or those of us who've got children in our lives, we don't have to actually be blood related to have children close to us that we care for. And I think what a great opportunity for us to put the, um, the blessing of God, the umbrella of God's blessing over our little ones. For us to have the opportunity to speak God's protection over them, God's blessing over them, that they would grow up knowing who they are, that they would grow up knowing that they are secure and have their identity in Jesus. So we're going to have the opportunity to do that. We've got six wonderful families. We've got eight children this morning who we are going to bless. And I'm going to invite them now to come and stand alongside the front here with me. And I'm going to go down and join them and introduce you to these wonderful families. And in, yeah, well, well, let's welcome them. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right, I am coming, everybody. I'm still here. Fantastic. It's so lovely to have you all with us this morning. Don't they look amazing? And I'm going to introduce you to the families and introduce you to the children. So if you're here and this is your friends and family are here, that's brilliant. For the rest of us as Heart Church, this is still an opportunity for us to get involved, okay? So I want to welcome Josiah and Yvonne. It's great to have you. And we're going to be blessing this morning Princess and Zion. We're going to be blessing the two of you here. It's great to welcome here Yinka and Tosin. It's great to have you. And we're going to be blessing Oluwa Fikeo this morning. Who? How, how many weeks old is he? Six weeks old. Bless him. <laughs> loving, he's loving church. He's really appreciated the worship so far. <laughs> Brilliant. And it's great to welcome Michael and Jade with, with us. It's great to have you here. Now then, I'm going to see. Do you want to tell everybody what your name is? Theo. Theo and? And Joe. Enzo, everybody. Okay, so we're going to be blessing Theo and Enzo. Great, and it's great to welcome Francis and Ella. It's great to have you here. Oh, would you want to tell everybody what your name is? Laron. Laron. It's great to welcome you here this morning. We're going to be blessing you. I don't want to stand with my back to you, but this is uh, Matt and Donetta, and we're going to be blessing Amari, who's being shy. He's, he's watching. He's watching it himself on the screen. <laughs> fantastic so it's great to have you guys with us and we're, we're really thrilled to be here and by no means least we've got joe and joy it's great to have you and zoe moyo is looking very beautiful and a little bit shy so i'm going to invite our eldership team and our leadership team to come forward and pray but heart church heart church i don't want you just to sit and watch now if there's a, a particular people you know at the front then you can be praying for them if you don't know them, the children's names are up on the screen, then this is an opportunity for us to pray the goodness and the blessing of God over these families. Okay, so you can join in as well. Let's spend a moment or two praying. Amen to the prayers that have been prayed. We look forward to hearing the stories of these children growing up, contributing who they are to their environments and to their church. 
Amen. Can I encourage us, uh, church, if you're able to, can I encourage us to stand? We're going to speak a blessing over them. So family, stay where you are. And church, we're going to speak this blessing over these families. Okay? So here we go, all together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Well, brilliant. Thank you so much. Be blessed. Enjoy the day of celebrations, families. And as they're making their... You can take your seats. Thank you, everybody. As you're making your way back to your seats, I'm going to invite Pastor Malcolm. He's going to come and lead us in prayer. That was beautiful, wasn't it? It's a great privilege, great privilege. Love what Tamsin does and you know, when we, when we pray our prayers and bless our children, we bless the future. It's not just a nice little religious ritual that we're going through, it's not at all about that. We bless the future, we believe in the power of blessing and we believe that it influences lives and that these children will be different even though they may not fully understand what is going on, they will receive something in their spirit that will influence the future. We just felt as a leadership team that it would be good to pray over a couple of areas. And um, the, the first is to do, you know, we're just aware of uh, certain um, situations uh, pastoral situations in the congregation to do with marriage and to do with family and uh, the, when, you, when you're running the church you know it's, it's, it's usual that these kind of things happen in the life of church particularly when you have a church uh, the size that we are um, but then there are other times when you realize wait a minute there's something else that's going on here and we just feel like the, the enemy is having a bit of a go in certain areas because you also realize as, 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 as an eldership and as a leadership that um, there are situations that you know about but there are also situations that you don't know about. And therefore, we want to address some of those spiritually. It's important that we continue to deal with things hands-on but we also want to address those things spiritually and it is good that we as a body um, uh, rise up and pray over those things and so I want to I want to pray specifically over our marriages you know the devil is the author of division and I want to I want to I want to speak over declare over every marriage in this house whether you're here today or you're watching online that which God has joined together let not man divide that which God that which God has joined together I like that little symbol rise there as I mentioned God I feel like you've I think I feel like you've got to say God now because but that which God has joined together let not man divide and uh, I want to um you know I want to say look the I noticed the lights have have gone down that's all good maybe maybe if you're here with your uh, husband or wife you know you might just don't you don't want anyone to know but you just might want to just slip your hand down and just take their hand and let that be let let me as I pray now let this be our confession you know even if you're still annoyed with each other even if you're still upset with each other even if you've had a row on the way to church but you're pretending everything's okay whatever we are going to keep saying that which God has joined together let not man divide you know God is a healing God It's not just about, God doesn't want just marriages that stay together. He does want that, but He wants marriages that are full of love and full of joy. And so, Father, over every precious couple here today, 
whether their spouse is here or not, in Jesus' name, I speak over them. I speak again over them. That which God has joined together, let not man divide in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every work of the devil and we rebuke him and we speak life and hope into every family that is represented here in the name of Jesus. Father, we rebuke the devil and all his works. And where there have been angry words spoken, where there have been things uh, said that are out of place, Father, I pray that forgiveness and love will flow and that, Father, you will bring healing and joy into every marriage and into every family for your glory, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let me say, you know, like, it's good to pray. But you, you, if you're really, really struggling, you can ask for help. You can ask for help. There's no shame. Every marriage, I don't care how things seem on a Sunday, every marriage has its great days and its tough days. Every one of them. They have their tough seasons sometimes. As I said so often, that's why we take vows. Because you need them. You need them. And, but don't struggle alone. Don't let pride stand in the way of you uh, finding healing. And, uh, and as it already has been addressed, which I highly recommend the, uh, the, 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 marriage, the marriage course. Um, there's, there's one currently running. But... Um, that uh, you can speak to, to Wayne or Joe, Pastor Wayne and Joe about that. Uh, and I highly recommend, uh, you know, you don't, you don't have to wait for everything to go wrong before you, every, you, you many of us, we, we put our car through an MOT, but we never think about putting our marriage through an MOT. Put your marriage through an MOT. Make sure things working well, amen? The second thing, I think appropriately, in regard to uh, the issues that we've seen across the news, just want to pray together over the situation in, in the Ukraine. Just we want to be very careful that, you know, that, uh, that even there's a lot of information, there's a lot of misinformation that comes at us. And uh, we obviously want to pray for the nation of Ukraine, but we want to be careful, I think, in our language, uh, even as I come to you today, I am praying uh, in regard to the fact that that Vladimir Putin and his government are the aggressors in this situation. We, we shouldn't be mixing in all that, the whole of the Russian people, in this decision. It is, they are not in the power to, to, to do this. And so we are, we are in our stand for peace. I just think we need to be careful in our language that this is not the whole Russian people coming against the Ukraine. It's Vladimir Putin and his government that is coming against. So I wonder, I think there are sometimes it's appropriate to stand. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as I pray. <laughs> Father God, this world of ours is sick and it needs your help. And Father, we have already expressed that the author of, the divi of, the author of division is the devil. And we understand that the author of war is, is this enemy of ours, the devil. And Father, for whatever all the complex reasons of this war, Lord God, we, we call upon Your Name and pray that, Father, it will stop. We pray the innocents will stop being killed. We pray for the people of Ukraine. And Father, we speak the blessing of God over them. We pray, oh God, that You will bring restoration to this nation. Father, we pray that You would cause this war to stop being a, a war of conflict and, 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 and that it would um, return to the negotiating table in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak for the protection of life in Jesus' name. Father, we as the people of God take authority over everything that would spiritual that would be behind this war in Jesus' name. And we bind the devil. We, we join with the people of God in the earth and we join our prayers together and come in agreement 
that Father, by the power of Your Spirit, this war will cease in Jesus' Name. This needless killing will cease in the Name of Jesus. And peace, genuine peace, will be restored in Jesus' Name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Let's keep praying. Um, I understand that, um, uh, that both the, 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 the Catholic Church and the uh, Anglicans are using Ash Wednesday, which is um, this, it's this Wednesday, isn't it? Um, they are, as a day of, of prayer and fasting for um, peace. Now, we don't, obviously, as Pentecostals, recognize Ash Wednesday in exactly the same way, but it's still a good thing to pray. And some of you might feel that you want to do that. Say, hey, on Wednesday, uh, we are actually getting together to pray on Wednesday. It's the, um, it's, it's, um, the uh, first Wednesday in the month, so we'll be praying. But and you might feel that you want to fast as we call on God, that he will bring peace in this uh, region of our world. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Malcolm. We believe our, our prayers are effective, don't we? So uh, let's keep praying. And as Pastor Malcolm said, yeah, we have heart prayer on Wednesday evening at City Site at 7.30. Um, it would be lovely to see uh, lots of us there to call on the name of God together. Well, I have welcomed you already, but I just wanted to add my welcome because I wouldn't want anyone to feel left out. I've welcomed you if you are here with child and baby blessing, but I want to welcome you if this is your 15th time or your 273rd time. Well done for counting. But I want to make sure that everybody um, is welcomed here this morning. And it's so great to have you with us. And maybe if you're joining us online, it's also great that you have found us and that you are watching with us. To help us get involved, we, we want our church to be a family. We believe that family is really important and foundational to who we are. So we uh, have ways we can do that. Now, one of the best ways I would recommend is our growth track. It's a four-week course. There's one starting next Sunday. It's on Zoom in the evening. And growth track really um, helps to explain who we are, how we do things, how you can find your fit within the Heart Church family. So if you want to have a look at that, you can head to our uh, courses page on our website to find out more about that. But also, you'll have heard us reference, Andy and I, reference over the last few weeks that we have opportunities within our teams on Sunday mornings. And again, a great way for you to get involved, get to know other people, and bring your strengths to, to contribute to our church family. So again, you can head to our website, um, heart.church forward slash teams, select the team that you would like to find out more about, and we will get in touch with you about that. Gosh, we've got lots going on because I need to tell you also about another new course that we have started. We've run it a couple of times last year and it's starting next Monday evening, March the 7th at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom and that's our effective job search course. Now then, I do need to read this because it's lots of big words. But this is a four-week course and it gives us tools, maybe I should go on it, gives us tools and tips and techniques to help us, uh, to, to help us achieve our best in our working life. It covers goal setting, CV writing, and interview prep, and much more. And we've heard some really great feedback um, from this course of people who it's genuinely made a difference in their working career and in their job searches. So that is next Monday evening. That starts to register for that. Again, head to our courses page on the website. And if that wasn't enough, Heart Church, we've also got something coming up very exciting next Sunday. So why not have a look at the screen? So next 
Sunday, Heart Church. It's our Vision Sunday, and it's a great opportunity. We're going to hear from Pastor Malcolm, and a great opportunity for us to restate our vision, to refocus what our uh, priorities are for this year. A great opportunity for us just to, again, to, you know, sometimes you know where you're going, but you just need to have a a refresh and a refocus. The theme, as you might have picked up there, is back to the future. So we're going to be looking, what do we need to go back to in order to build a stronger future? So come, I really encourage you, if you've not been part of a Vision Sunday before, then please make sure you're here. If you can't actually be here physically in the room, remember, you can also watch it online too. But may I encourage us all to make next Sunday a priority. Then I am going to ask Andy to come and lead us in our offering. There was a little little applause from over here, Tamsin. Come on, let's give it up for Tamsin. Appreciate you. Yeah, good morning, church. Just want a special welcome, extend my welcome to you if you're visiting this morning. It's great to see so many guests with us. Yeah, in this moment, we are, we're going to bring our tithes, our offering, we're going to bring our giving. But just to say, if you are a guest, you are visiting, please don't feel under any pressure to give this moment. Really, we're just thrilled that you're here, thrilled that you're joining us this morning. The ways to give, they are already behind me on the screen. That QR code will take you to heart.church forward slash giving. It's really easy to give on there. We'll have the buckets at the back of the room as well. And as you head out this morning, um, the buckets will be on the door if you'd like to give that way. Just to encourage us, this is a moment for us uh, as Christians, we say to worship. It's a moment for us. It's a, we worship in many different ways, but this is one of the habits, one of the rhythms that we build in our lives to give back to God. It's part of our worship. We've got different rhythms in our life, different habits that we get into. And I just believe that for us as Christians, this is such a great habit for us to get into. A habit that says each month, God, you are first in my life. God will put on you first above everything else. And we do that in different areas, but this is another area in which we can do that as Christians. So right now I'm going to give us an opportunity. We're just going to take a minute so you've got time. You can head to that website and give if you'd like to right now and, and really worship in that way. But maybe, maybe you give using standing order. I encourage you, use this moment right now to say, God, thank you so much for all you have poured out into my life. Let's have this moment of worship. trust we've all had a chance to give please would you would you stand with me as we just pray over our giving God we thank you so much for your generosity towards us for all the blessings you have poured out into our lives we thank you as we've sang about this morning for your love Lord God we thank you for all you have given us and in this moment we come and we bring our giving we say God would you be first in our life would you be first would you be Lord of all and Lord would you bless bless this offering and enable it to go further than we could imagine in Jesus name we pray amen amen well you can stay standing we are going to release our preschool adventure kids out right now as we normally would but also if there's primary school children in the room you stayed in for the for the child and baby blessing you too can be checked in now as well so feel free to head out these doors just over here and our team will point you in the right direction for the rest of us let's have a moment of connect why not say hello to somebody who you've not met before but also just give people space if they'd like it
great to see so many of us connecting. If I can ask us to um, come back and you can stay standing, but um, if maybe we can bring those conversations to an end and you can continue those afterwards. We are uh, in a moment, this is slightly awkward, I've asked everyone to, and the, and the preacher is still talking. In a moment, uh, we've got the privilege and great honor of having uh, Mark Ritchie here this morning preaching for us and opening up the Bible. So we are going to um, look forward to hearing from him. And for those of you in the room who don't know, he is also my husband. So I have to say that he is, we're in for a really good rest of the morning. Really, really good. But before we get there, let's focus on something more important. We're actually going to um, turn our attention back to God and we're going to worship. And we're learning a new song here this morning. So lean in just because you might not have heard it before doesn't mean you can't worship. So let's lean in and worship God. And then we're going to hear from Mark. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus, over fear and all anxiety, to every soul held captive. Sweet Jesus
Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every strong. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Amen. Grab your seats. Incredible. Thank you, band, for leading us so authentically and so beautifully. So great. It's brilliant to be here. And uh, hi, everyone. My name's Mark. And um, I, today is a little bit, it just reminded me when Pastor Malcolm was doing that thing where he was praying for husband and wives. And it just reminds me, because some of you that know me, I, I'm a bit naughty. And I remembered, I remembered what happened at Bible college. One of my friends at Bible college, the pastor said, you know, we just want to pray for marriages. Maybe if you're here, you just want to reach out and take your wife's hand. And one of my friends at Bible college, there was a girl in the room that he really liked. And uh, he thought it would be funny to take that opportunity just to slip his hand across the and take her hand, yeah? Well, we all thought it was hilarious. And what was even funnier is she took that as a sign from God and uh, she was a nightmare. So well done him, yeah? <laughs> just shows you, just be very careful who you put your hand out to in prayer because they might receive your hand and your life will be a mess. So, um... <laughs> okay. Um, I, uh, I don't know about you, but... Um, the storms, we've had a lot of storms, haven't we? Wow. Three named storms. And that's what I want to kind of talk about. I, I want to say a couple of quick things is that, you know, we've had all these storms and it makes you feel old when I am like looking at young students walking around in storms with shorts on. Has anyone else seen this? They've got t-shirts on and shorts on. When there's a storm, I've got coats on. I've got five coats on. I steal coats from children. I, I don't, I don't. Just, it's not on family blessing day. No, no, no. Children are beautiful. Um, but what is it with students where they just think, oh, it's a storm. It's a named storm. It's one of the worst storms I've ever seen. So I'm going to go out in my shorts, in my tiny little t-shirt and just wander around showing the world that I am young and I am a winner. And that Scottish guy there with his eight coats on is a loser, yeah? And that's how I definitely feel. And um, I don't know if anyone else saw this, but I, I don't know if we can stick this image up. But uh, there was a great image. Did anyone else see this? Isn't this brilliant? It's like the sheep of hiding in the bus shelter. I love it because the storms are bad. They're bad. I just, I, I love that because I just think, oh, the next person to go in there has got a little blessing for them, yeah? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, um, naming the storms is like become the thing. So, we've had Dudley... We've had Eunice. Is that a good storm name, Eunice? Is it? Does it make you feel frightened when you think of Eunice? <laughs> oh, Eunice is coming. Oh. It also makes me think about when Jesus calmed the storm. He's like, Eunice, calm down. <laughs> calm down, Eunice. Franklin, Franklin. And then, does anybody know the next storm? If there's another one, what's it going to be called? Gladys. Is that really true? Gladys is the next name of the... I mean, come on. That is not... Does that... It's Gary. <laughs> Gary the storm, no. I wanted to ask us today about... I wonder what it would be like if we had to name the storm in our life. What would the name be that you would put there? The current storm that you're going through, would you be able to name it? Maybe 
you're here in this room and it will be a family turmoil is a storm that you're going through. Maybe a financial difficulty. Maybe marriage struggles. Maybe you are dealing with anger. Maybe you've got a life restricting habit or maybe a life controlling habit. Maybe you are dealing with anger that rages inside of you or maybe somebody is letting you down and you're here today and if you had to try and name the storm in your life, maybe you're watching online and you're just thinking right now, I wonder what I would call the name of my storm. The troublesome emotions that we have, we're trying to put a name to them. What would be the name that, that you feel? I wonder if it would be helpful if we could come up with an accurate name for some of the emotions that swirl around in us. You know, if we were just to kind of say, this is anxiety or this is, this is fear. Or maybe we would be really honest with ourselves and say when we're on our social media and we can see other people seem to be doing better than us. If we were to name the storm, this is the storm called envy. This is a storm that's coming in called jealousy. Wonder if we would find it helpful if we started to name our storms. Psalm 46, beautiful words, and I wanted to read them to you. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes Wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Nobody here would probably put their hand up and say, Mark, I don't really have any personal storms in my life. I've never really known what that feels like. Most of us would be honest to say that we've gone through many storms. And for some of us, we would feel just like three named storms in quick succession. We would say, wow, the storms just keep on coming. The storms just keep on coming. You know, we, we, we've been through this crazy, weird storm called COVID that's affected and impacted so many of us. And now we're sort of staggering out of that storm straight into the storm about war. And it's causing us horrendous anxiety and it makes us feel anxious. And we're thinking, what is going on? The storms just keep on coming. And what about you personally? Some of us are going through stuff right now and we feel so shattered we feel like everything has been shaken it's like my goodness I don't know how much more battering I can take I don't know how much of the storm I can I can get through because it's difficult and it's tough there's people in the room and you feel like you've not had a good night's sleep for months, maybe even a year, where you've just not been able to get through the night because you wake up in the middle of the night and the storms just absolutely keep on coming. 
You know, storms expose us. I don't know if you've kind of had this, but I've seen as I've been traveling around Nottingham, there's quite a lot of fences that have come down, yeah, with the storms. And uh, what's made me smile a little bit is that one or two of the storms have taken out a fence and it exposes the mess behind the fence. Has anyone else seen this? It's like quite cool when you've got a big fence sticking up there and no one can see inside, but suddenly the fence has been taken out and you're like, oh, they've not done gardening for about two decades, have they? It's like, you know, it's like, oh, it's great for judging, you know, just driving around, judging people's gardens. Um, but, you know, this is what storms do, you know, they expose the mess. Because it's quite cool when things are going fine and things are going well. We can all put our best face on, can't we? We can all kind of like, oh, it's lovely. Everything's good. Things are great. I was smiling when Pastor Malcolm said, but you're coming to church. You know that thing where you get trying to get your kids into the car in time for church and everybody's arguing in the car and like you're son's been a complete, I mean, not my mind's absolutely amazing, but some of you, some of you, some of you know what I'm chatting about, and there's absolute carnage in the car, and you're like, kind of like all fighting and arguing, and it's like, oh, shouting at each other, and then you pull into the car park, and a pastor happens to be in the car park, and you get out, and you're like, oh, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you feel him? Can you feel him? Because I can feel him. <laughs> presence. The, can you feel the presence? Because I can feel. I can feel the presence of God. <laughs> it's like, I love it. I love it. You see, we're good at putting our fences up and kind of like hiding the mess and the, the rubbish that's going on behind. And, and yet storms expose us. The stresses and the strains of the day, they take away our fences and we can see the real true mess that we're in. You know, some of you know my little journey just a few years ago. You know, um, some of my masks and some of my fences were torn down by a little personal storm that I had. And wow, it was interesting to see that once the, the kind of mask was taken away, that, that actually we saw what was really inside Mark Ritchie, what was really there. And, you know, we don't love it, we don't want it, and we don't like it, but storms come along and they take away the barriers and they expose what is really and truly there. And I wanted to say that the Bible here, in Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength an ever present help in time of trouble I wanted to speak into your soul these words today wherever you're sitting and whatever it is you're going through whatever storm you're going through right now he says be still and know that I am God I went on this thing called Extreme Character Challenge. I went and did it in Scotland and then I did it in Wales just a couple of years ago. And it was really, really tough. And the Brecon Beacons, the Welsh Mountains, my goodness. And, and there was this one little bit where we were climbing to the top of the last peak of the day and... I was with one of the guys and we were helping the teams up that last bit and we were sticking our tents on at the top of the mountain. And I stayed with the guy for a while and then he said, listen, I've got another hour to be here. Why don't you it's just get to the top of that mountain and you'll see all the rest of the guys. Just get up there. And for most of you, that would be fine. You would be like, just go straight up top. That's it. But I'm not great with directions, yeah? I'm not really good with all that. And so I didn't have a sat-nav with me, so I was struggling. And I started to go up this mountain, and I got a little bit lost, and I got a little bit fearful because it was beginning to get dark. And I got to the top of the mountain, and when I got to the top of the mountain, I was trying to put my tent up, and the wind was horrendous, and it was dark, and it was cold, and there was this kind of storm brewing, and I began to feel a bit frightened. 
And then my friend James, he just called over and I didn't even know that he was there because it was difficult to see. And he says, Mark, come over to my tent. And I got into his tent and, you know, just that moment where suddenly you felt completely safe. His voice was calm. He gave me some food. Well, I say food. It was that kind of dried stuff that you add hot water to. And people go, oh, look, spaghetti bolognese. No, no, hot sawdust, yeah? And uh, it's not spaghetti bolognese. Don't believe the lie. And uh, he gave me this food and there was light and warmth in the tent. But, you know, I want you to understand something is that I've been going through this little storm and I got into this place of solace. I got into this place of solitude. It felt so good and so calm. But what I really want to communicate is that the wind was still rattling outside. All the tents were still shaking. Everything was still shaking. But in that moment, I was there safe in this place. And friend, you know, you're going to go from this place and you know, the storm that you're in right now, maybe it will not stop as soon as you leave this place. Maybe as we pray at the end, your storm is not immediately going to be calm. But what I need you to know is that the Bible says, come in, be still and know that I am God. That you can be covered by his presence. That you can be safe in the middle of a storm. That you can know what it is to be still and know the presence of God. I believe for someone today, whatever storm you're going through, there is some solitude and some healing for you today in this place because we come into the presence of God and we know that, wow, God is a safe place. Be still and know that I am God. As I was in that tent and I could hear the wind rattling around, I felt completely safe. As you are in the middle of your financial storm, your family storm, your relationships, your workplace, your anxiety, your depression, whatever your storm that you named earlier is, could you know today, friend, that you can come in the shelter of the presence of God and know that God is with you, an ever-present help in trouble. That my friend James, as he began to speak to me, I just began to calm down. And that as God begins to speak to your soul, that you would begin to calm and peace would come and be yours. That maybe somebody is really anxious about this news and you're watching the news too much and you're like getting obsessed by it and it's really got you disturbed and upset. Would you know that you can come into the shelter of the presence of God and know that he can speak calm words to your soul? Be still and know that I am God. He wants to feed us and nourish us. I... I'm so proud. My mum and dad are, are here today from Scotland. And, you know, I'm so pleased. I was thinking about that when Tamsin was talking about his children. And I feel so honoured and privileged that my mum and dad brought me up loving God. And, you know, I, my mum and dad and my grand and my granddad used to talk about memorising the Bible. And, you know, we've kind of, sometimes we feel like we've moved away from that. But I've got back into it. I've got a little notebook I always have in my pocket. And when I'm at Q's, Asda or wherever, instead of getting my phone out, I get my little book out and I'm just meditating on the word of God. Just got the word of God swirling around my soul and around my heart. And it's so good, friend, to allow God in the stillness of the storm, in the shelter of the storm, to allow him to feed you. Allow him to feed you with his word the light and the warmth that was inside that tent. And somebody, it has been so bleak. Somebody, it's been so dark for you. And here we are in this moment and God is saying, come into the shelter of my wings and know the warmth and the light that I will provide you. 
I believe that somebody in the room is really struggling with very toxic and very dark thoughts. And God spoke to me a couple of days ago about somebody in the room, maybe watching online, that has thought the darkest and the bleakest thoughts. And here God says, come into my shelter. Shelter in the storm. Be still and know that I am God. The storms keep coming, but his presence changes everything. The tents are still rattling in the wind. Everything is still shaking, but I'm safe in the shelter of his wing. And finally, I wanted to talk about a savior in the storm. I don't know how many of you saw or heard about this, but it's a place that we love as a family because we used to go there as kids, but Newquay and Towan Beach in Newquay, and some of you may have heard the story, but there was a lady in the storm recently where she was on the wall at the seafront trying to take a selfie of the huge waves and capture this moment. And some of you may know the story that one of the waves just absolutely wiped her out, took her right off the wall. And the ferocious backwash and undertow carried the woman swiftly away from the shore. And there was this little moment where a few people that were on there at the beach had to make a decision. Are we going in? Are we going in? The undertow was taking her so quickly and so far away, she was drifting. And they had to make that quick decision. Are we going in? And some of you know the story that a few of them quickly made the call to go in and they actually were able to rescue her. They put out their hand and she grabbed her hand and they were able to pour her in. Friend, I need you to understand that the Bible says that we have all turned away. Every one of us, those of us on the stage, those of us in the band, those of us with the Bibles open, and those of us wherever we're sitting, each of us have turned away. Like sheep, we've gone astray. You see, we're drifting away from God. Every one of us is drifting away from God. And God saw us drifting away from Him. And Father God and Jesus, they had to make a quick decision. Are we in? Are we going in? Are we just going to let mankind drift away? Someone once said in a preach, I wonder what would have happened if God had just said, Do you know what? They're done. Let's start again. But God and Jesus had to make a quick decision. Are we going in? Just like those people on the beach, freezing, cold, dangerous, we're going in. And God said, we're in. And that is how beautiful and powerful the message of Jesus coming to earth. That God and Jesus up in heaven with the best, wonderful beauty of glorious heaven decided to go into the dark, cold of this world. And Jesus came as a baby. We're in. We're in. And when Jesus came as a baby, he came in so that he would grow to be a man and they killed him on a cross. And maybe you've been here and saw or heard the message of the cross many times and you have thought to yourself, what does that have to do with living in 2022? But this is what it is, that God loved us so much. He says, I'm in, I'm in. He sent his son Jesus, that Jesus would be in, come to earth and be killed on a cross. So that in Jesus, dying on the cross, he's reaching out to you. He's reaching out to you, friend, wherever you're sitting, he's reaching out to you that you would take his hand, that you would be rescued and be found in the arms of God. Jesus had to die on the cross to make that way possible, that a connection could be made between God and us. And in a moment, as the presence of God is here, 
I want to give us the opportunity. As many of us would say, do you know what? I thought I was so clever. I thought I'd got it all sorted. I'm on the wall taking selfies. I'm doing the deal. It's all cool. But life comes and knocks us off our feet. And every one of us is drifting away from God. And right now, Jesus comes to you and reaches out to take your hand. But this is the story of the Bible that you get to choose. That you can actually reject that today. As Jesus puts his hand out to you, you get to say, do you know what? No, 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 it's fine. I'm going to keep on drifting. And oh, friend, forgive me for getting emotional for a moment, but drifting forever and ever without God means drifting to eternity without God. Forever and ever without God. He reaches out to you today and you can say yes. I take your hand. I come through the cross of Jesus into the arms of God. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pray a prayer in a moment. I'm going to ask us in a couple of moments to bow our heads and I'm going to pray a really short prayer. And I'm going to ask that wherever you're sitting today that you would pray that prayer. Don't say it out loud so people can hear it, but pray it after me in your heart. And then I'm going to say, Amen. And then we're just going to keep our heads bowed for a few more moments and then I'm going to count to three and I'm going to say, if you prayed that prayer, I just want you to slip up your hand and if you prayed the prayer, I'll see your hand. And you're saying, yes, Jesus, I come through the cross into your arms. And we'll say amen and hand the service on. Let's bow our heads in the presence of God. This is the prayer. Why don't you just pray in your heart after me? God, thank you that you said you were in. Thank you that you sent Jesus. That Jesus died for me. I'm sorry for drifting away from you. Sorry for my sin. I take your hand now. And I come through Jesus. Into your arms. In Jesus name. As every head stays bowed, every eyes closed. I'm going to count to three. And if you prayed that today, I just want you to raise your hand so I can see it. One, two, three. That's amazing. Really great. Wonderful. So good. People all over the room. Lord, thank you for people responding to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, before I hand back to the guys, I have one last prayer inside of me. For I believe that there's lots of us that we are in a storm God welcomes us in. Be still and know that I am God. If you are here and you're willing to admit that, yeah, I've got a bit of a storm going on. I don't always know how to name it. Some of us, it's maybe a little storm. For some of us, it's a horrendous storm. Then in a moment, I'm going to invite you to stand and I'm going to pray a prayer that we would know the presence of God in the midst of the storm. Be still and know that I am God. So if you're in a storm today, whatever you are, why don't you just stand and join us with those of us that are standing. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Oh God, Father, in our struggles and in our troubles and in our storm, may we know your peace. May we know your stillness, God. And I speak, friend, over your soul today. And I say, be still. Be still and know that he is God. 
The tents are still shaking and the storm is still swirling around. But today know that he is with you an ever present help in time of trouble. God bless you. Grab your seats, amen. Wow, thank you, Mark. And um, it's just so great to have seen uh, hands go up across this room. And we are so thrilled that you have felt this morning that you've been able to respond to God and that you have um, made a move towards God. Let me assure you that God is making a very swift and positive move towards you. God wants to know you. And that is really, really great. We want to also just help you. Uh, we don't want to just leave you from this morning, but we want to also help you uh, know what to do. How can you develop your relationship with God? How can you get to know this God who Mark has spoken about this morning, who will be with us in our storms? Well, we uh, will have some of our pastoral team at the front after this morning's service, and they are here for you to come and speak to them. Come and speak to them and say, hey, I put my hand up, I've responded, I want to know more about God, or I'm coming back to God, can you help me? They're here for you. Or if you've come with friends or family, why not chat to them and ask them to help you too? And if you need to rush off, or if you're watching online, then you can head to our website, you head to heart.church forward slash response, and there's a form for you to fill in there, and we will be in touch with you. Really, really great. Uh, but our pastoral team are also here. There's, there's some of us, I was standing at the side because I had to be, but I would actually have been standing around some storms going off in my life. And our pastoral team are also here for us too. So I know we've been prayed together, but if you would just appreciate somebody praying with you, standing with you, talking things through even, um, or just reminding us of some of the promises of God's word, then also the pastoral team is here for you or your friends and family also. Go to them too. Well, church, we're coming towards the end of our time together, but what a great time we have had, haven't we? Families, it's been great to have you with us. We hope that you have great celebrations now throughout the rest of your day and that this, this day becomes a great memory as you look back over it in the months to come. Just a few little reminders from me. Remember, Wednesday coming up is heart prayer. It's the first Wednesday of the month. So we're gathering to pray and we'll also be focusing around um, the, the situation that we prayed about earlier in Ukraine. So that's coming up this Wednesday. Don't forget we've got Growth Track and other courses that you can sign up for. Don't forget that next Sunday you want to be here bright and early, half past 10, Vision Sunday. You want to come and be part of that. And if you're 18 to 30, unfortunately I'm not in that age bracket any longer, but if you're age 18 to 30, then our, all of those uh, young people are going out for lunch at Tadas Kino's. So you are invited. This is your invitation to join them. They're going to be at the exit door at 12.30 in the atrium for you to join with them. So I'm uh, going to just pray over us before we go and can start our weeks. Is that okay? So may I encourage you to stand. Let's stand and receive God's blessing. And we, we, we've spoke this over our families, over our little ones earlier. And I thought it would just be a real honor and a privilege for me to speak this over you. So if you're ready to receive this, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious towards you. The Lord turn his face towards you and even in the middle of our storms, give us peace. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Have a great week, Heart Church.